All right, what does the EA in weathering start uh, stand for, Alex? Yes, the EA in weathering stands for break. What is uh, mechanical slash physical? It's those two words are interchangeable. Oh. To change, to break down the rocks by changing the physical appearance of it. Perfect. So if you wrote something similar, that's fine. I'm writing when physical processes naturally break rock down. There's my EA. Naturally break rock into smaller pieces. You can use, grab another one, huh? Only changing physical appearance. Give me some examples with explanation. What I mean by that is like, Define what that means, right? Don't just tell me abrasion. Tell me what abrasion is. Amiri. So I said frost wedging and then next to it, water freezes in the crack of a rock and breaks it apart. Perfect. I'm going to put frost and root wedging. And I think of like a root wedgie, right? Or a frost wedgie. And we know when. A wedgie is when you get underwear and crack. We know it's true, it happens to everybody. So when a rock gets frost or a root in its crack, it's called a root wedgie or a frost wedgie. So I'm gonna even write our little word wedgie to help you remember. And this is when roots or frost water slash roots get into the cracks of rocks. And expand. And even though like roots don't like, I mean, expand like ice does as they get bigger, that's what it means, right? I mentioned in this one, what is abrasion? Um, Sam. Um, uh, abrasion is a grinding away of rock by friction or impact. Yep. Uh, grinding. I always think of skateboarding, if you guys know, like when you grind on a rail. Yeah. So, grinding away of rock by friction or impact. Yeah. Um, what is it called when this happens in a river? It's a math term as well, but we don't use it in a math way, Layla. Rounding. rounding. Yeah, rounding is an example of that. And this can also happen by wind too. I don't know if you remember the Bill Nye video where he uses the sandblaster. So wind can also abrade rocks as well because they carry uh, particles. All right, so we've got, there's our mechanical and physical. What about chemical? That word chemical kind of gives me a little bit of a head start on what that means. Can I have somebody new tell me what this means? I'm getting the same people over again. Fiona. Break down rocks into smaller pieces, creating a new substance. Yes, this is when um, uh, rocks are broken down. So they're still being broken down, right? and create a new substance. Bless you. That's the key word. That means like their chemical compositions are changed. So if, if you need to write that, like chemical compositions are changed. We talked about when I dissolve something, right? If I And I know I use this example a lot, but 
Salt individually is Na, right? And then, or really it's NaCl, uh, sodium chloride. But if I add water to that, it's no longer just salt. It's salt water. There, it's become a chemical compound. It's no no longer this. It's no longer the same. Does that make sense? It is dissolved. Yes. Oh, oh yes. Yes. I like to think about it. If you remember the difference between physical and chemical changes, just in general, a physical change you can put back together. I think of it like a puzzle, right? We talked about with the cookie. If I really wanted to, I could put that cookie back together. It might look a little different, but I could still put it back together. When I added the water and the cookie dissolved in the water, I could not put the cookie back even if I tried, right? So if you can't put it back together in some way, some fashion that's relatively similar, um, then it's a chemical change because it's created a new substance. So I talked about dissolving, right? We already know what that is. So I'm not gonna explain that one. Give me a new one. Somebody new. Daniel. Okay. Um, which one are we talking about? Sorry. Dissolving. We're on chemical weathering. I need you to start following along, please. Can you give us an example of chemical weathering? Um, an example of chemical weathering could, could be um, You should have already had this on your study guide. Um, Kavar. Oxidation. Oxidation, what's the real name for oxidation? The one, the common name that we use? Oxygen. Uh, well, that's the root word, but what is it, what is it called, Ava? Rusting. Rusting, thank you. Do you have another one, Trey? Yeah. Clay formation? Yes. Um, that, the fact that it has the word form, right? It means it's creating something new. It is forming something new. And then acid rain. Like acid is a chemical, right? So it actually, a lot of these have pieces of words or, or certain words that can help us understand that they are chemical. All right, any questions about weathering so far? Yes, Alex? Um, I just want to to um, do, did we have to write the examples for dissolving oxidation acid rain? It, it, rule of thumb, if it's on my paper, it needs to be on yours too. A lot of you guys lost points on the weather and erosion and deposition lab because you did not make changes to your paper when we went over it as a class. If I take the time to go over it as a class, it's important, right? So it means that if you don't have what I have, you need to fix it. So please make sure you're doing that. I will take points off. All right, erosion. I like to think of, remember, like we move on a road. Rocks move on E road. If that's what helps you remember. I appreciate now that I, I see that you guys are adding that. Thank you, thank you. It makes a difference. It really does. What could we say the definition for erosion is? 
I'm getting the same two people, same three people. Michael, um, kind of like move, moving, like moving rocks. Perfect. This is the removal. I'm gonna say the movement and removal. of weathered material, meaning that it's already broken down. Somebody's calling out and this is your one and only warning from one location to another. This is that move, right? I am moving. Landforms that are created by erosion look like, I know some of you might not have known what to write on here, but are these the ones that start small and get bigger or start big and get smaller, Ariel? These start big and get smaller. Because I'm taking pieces away. Is this constructive or destructive, Amelia? This is destructive. It looks like something has destroyed it. Or it looks like a destructive force has acted upon them, right? Like me and a brand new tub of ice cream. I'm gonna destroy it. <laughs> Give me some examples, uh, Samantha. A sea cliff. Or a cliff in general, right? It doesn't have to be a sea cliff, but a cliff in general is originally a mountain or a hill. It reminds me of Pride Rock. And then I've got Rafiki at the top holding Simba by his neck, apparently, in this picture. Right? The bottom of this used to be complete and then slowly was worn away. Give me another example. Audrey. A valley, perfect. What normally forms valleys as they move and grind against the ground cat? Glaciers. Glaciers. Not always formed by glaciers, but a lot of times. Whew. So I always think there's like, you know, like a hole missing, right? Give me another one. Savannah. This one is what is a, I don't know if it's like a national monument, but it is one of the most famous examples of erosion and weathering known in the United States. A canyon. a canyon, very good. Canyons are formed by water erosion. Give me another one, Jasmine, if you can think of one. I showed you a picture, Harry Potter, of the a movie from Harry Potter and water was hitting the side of the mountain and it created a cave. Right? So I've got like the side of a mountain and then water is cr crashing up against the side of a mountain and creating a cave. So these, sometimes it's, this can cause um, mountains to become rounded, right? Because wind is also going to erode the top of the mountain. Just like when you guys need to sharpen a pencil, right? The more you use a pencil, the duller it becomes. That's, that's weathering and erosion. Does everybody follow me on that? Mm -hmm. Amiri. Hoodoos. Uh, I'm going to write um, rounded mountains here. Sometimes um, 
jagged mountains can also be caused by erosion because um, it's like chunks have been taken out. And then you just said hoodoos, right? Hoodoos are those like stacks. They're also known as like, uh, we have sea stacks as well. Sam? Um, uh, arches. arches. So all of these look like a piece is missing. Let me bring that up. Or it looks like they've been just worn down over time. Yes. Uh, deltas? Deltas are not formed by erosion. Erosion has to happen at some point in order for a delta to form, but a delta is, a, is formed by a constructive process. If you are struggling to think about which one it is, I want you to break it down, destructive or constructive. Was this landform destroyed or was this landform built up? That should really help you, right? Because if weathering and erosion are, is destructive and deposition is the only one that's constructive. All right, three, two, one. We're gonna have a lot of extra time today. That's good though. I remember you guys showed it to me, yeah. Fine. But I do have people who need to do a retake first today. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Because um, I think it would be really good to to assist some some people who are struggling with that. Okay. Deposition. What word? Well, or were there several words in this that would help you understand the definition here? Give me a word, um, Layla. Deposit. deposit. And the word deposition, right? Meaning that I'm undoing its original position. I don't. I don't want you to get that confused with erosion, though. So I want. If you think about the word deposit, it means. If you remember, it means I'm adding. So it means um, I'm adding to and building. So is this, if I'm building it up, is it destructive or constructive? Constructive, perfect. Just like I'm gonna build up my bank account. Yes. Slowly but surely. <laughs> yep. Um if a a dollar a week, if you guys put a dollar a week away, by the end of a year you'd have fifty-two dollars, right? And then by the end of 10 years, you'd have $520, right? So that kind of stuff adds up. It does. I said the end of a week. So at the end of, there's 52 weeks in a year, right? So slowly but surely you would add up over time. I mean, then when you guys get a job, put more in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the definition for deposition? I know that's a, that's a tongue twist if I want to say it super fast. Can I have one of my mobile friends answer this one for me? Somebody new? I'm gonna say Sam Yutha, Brianna, Ryan, or Daniel. You're concerning me that we didn't do this. 
Nevita, thank you. Oh, your mic isn't working. I think that that would explain why you didn't. Can you try again? The depositing of rocks. Yes, ma'am. See what I did? Okay. Um, I'm going to say when sediment, because it. I'm gonna put dollar signs in my S. Or settled and builds up. So what do landforms created by deposition look like then? What do landforms created by deposition look like then? Jayla? Perfect. These start small and get bigger. Like we said, it is constructive, like a construction worker builds. And I don't want you to think that these get like super tall. I mean, they could get like a hill, right? But they're typically flatter, low lying, or like lumpy. There, yeah, it's never going to become a mountain, ever. Um, mountains are formed by tectonic plates anyway, right? So these are typically flat, low lying, bumpy, like a hill, right? Give me some examples. I know Alex had one earlier. You want to share that one with us, Alex? No. What did he say? Cat? A delta. Remember, where are these normally found? At the what? At the what? Go ahead, cat. At, at where? At the end of a river. What's the end of a river also called? The mouth of a river. Because it's where it opens up, right? Good thing my face is in showing. <laughs> so the mouth or end of a river. What uh, what else? A Mary. An alluvial fan. Alluvial fans and deltas are very similar, but alluvial fans typically happen in between mountains. And the right, we talked about how it like fans out because it only had one little small space and all of a sudden it had all this space where it spreads out. Give me another one, Trey. Um, sand dune. A sand dune. What's an underwater sand dune called? <laughs> it's also where you get your drinks at the beach. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sam. Sandbar. A sandbar, yeah. Like if I had a hotel or like a resort or a restaurant at the beach, I'd call it the sandbar. Um, give me another one, Joseph. Islands? Islands, but with a pair of fish, right? Sometimes islands are are, um, are also prop formed by erosion, like when coastlines are eroded and separates the land. But islands can also be formed by like volcanoes, which are depositional. So as long as you understand the difference between when islands are formed as a result of erosion, right? Um, like the coastline, like the outer banks, right? Like, didn't we see a picture or an image in the weathering and erosion crash course versus when they're depositional, like from volcanoes or the parrotfish? Alex? Beaches. Beaches. Now, again, beaches can be formed by mechanical weathering because that sand, right, is a, form, is a process of abrasion. So, the sand itself gets deposited and built up for us to be able to walk on. So just understand that you can't have deposition without weathering and erosion in the first place. All right. Lucas? A hill. A hill. Okay. Um, Sam Hughes? 
a swamp. A riverbed, like where that's bottom of a river, right? Perfect. Okay. Yes, but it wouldn't be sediment, right? Yes, but when we're so, you, you could consider like several different processes like that, right? But specifically when we're talking about weather and erosion, depositions, talking about rocks. Yes. Oh, yeah. So those, those would still count, uh, like if you want to think about deposition in that way, but when they're like not, when I talk about rocks, um, that's what it means specifically with weathering erosion and deposition. Does that make sense? Um, all right. Our next one is the water cycle. The water cycle. What does the TR in transpiration stand for? What did we talk about that standing for, Amelia? Tree. And I know a lot of you think that the meaning of this is, is what do you normally think of? What did I tell you to remember? Tree sweat, right? But just know trees don't really sweat, okay? Like if you go to another teacher and be like, Mr. Panitha, did you know that trees sweat? He's gonna be like, Miss Burley, what are you teaching us? <laughs> so what does this really mean? What do I really mean when I talk about tree sweat, quote unquote? Uh, all? Um, when the water, I'm sorry, when plants release water vapor through their leaves. Okay, when plants release water vapor through their leaves. Just like when we release water through our skin, it's called perspiration. Condensation nation! What word do we know in condensation that helps us to remember? Daniel. Condense. 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 And what does it mean to condense? What does it mean to condense something? Uh, Ava. To turn it into a water vapor. Okay, so this is when this is when water, it's not turned into a water vapor, it starts as a water vapor in this case. But if I <laughs> said I'm going to condense all of my notes into one study guide, what does that mean, Joseph? I'm squishing it together. And didn't we, does this happen when it's hot or cold? Uh, this is actually another one of the, um, this is like another one of those things that you do with the um, butters inside of it, like tree and tree sweat. Yeah. What does the C stand for? What did I tell you? Remember the C stands for? CO is air cooling down. Okay. CO could be cool, right? Um, the C could also stand for? Clouds. So Alex was right. This does happen when um, when water is cooled. I remember this because when we're cold, don't we like huddle together, right? We huddle together with one another. We condense and come together. So this is when when water vapor. So it starts as a gas, right? because it starts with the water vapor, it cools, and those water droplets are so cold, they come together and condense. So they condense and come together to form a cloud. And remember, it starts as a gas and ends as a liquid. This is the same process that allows you to write creepy messages to your siblings on the mirror after you take a shower. 
right? Mm -hmm. It's hot in the shower. And then as the water vapor travels and moves away from the heat of the shower, it sticks. Remember, because it has to have something to stick to. Sticks to your mirror, which is cold. And then forms little water droplets. Right. <laughs> I put a hand, put two hand mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and my, my sister and I used to do that this in like the car along car rides. We'd write each other secret messages on the on the windows in the car, you know what I mean? Parents would get so mad because they leave streets. But whatever. You only live once. Alright, what word is in evaporation that tells me what this is? Michael. Think what is that? A, is that a word? Right. Think about a word that can stand by itself. Evaporate. Okay, evaporate. What word is in evaporate? Lucas. Vapor. I think about e as it ends as a vapor, right? It ends as a vapor. Does this require cool or heat? Like coldness or heat? Cat heat. heat. This is when the sun. The sun. The sun heats up water and turns the water to vapor. So this starts as a liquid and ends as a gas. Something? I thought, I saw something. Okay. It's like a thing to like cloud gym, but like, it's like the little mist clouds of water. It is, it is. Um, I used to think it was when clouds cried <laughs> when I was little. I, I always like, why is this guy crying? My mom told me it was the Lord. Or when yeah, some uh my stepmom used to say it was like when angels cried and then when it when it thundered, she was like, Oh, they're bowling. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, and now I'm a science teacher, so I'm like, there's a scientific explanation for that. But I always remember those stories, you know, when you're little. Um, all right, so what's precipitation? Rain. Huh? That's an example of it, but what's the definition? Ava? When water droplets form big and heavy inside of a cloud and fall back down to earth. Perfect. When clouds get too full with water and fall back to earth. Or, and the water falls back to earth. Yes? Is precipitation, um, the CRP, it, it sticks, and that, that means that the water fell down and you're drinking. Okay, like you can't, you, we wouldn't have water to drink unless you, or, or to sit unless it fell back down. So when clouds get to, I like that you guys think of like, of your own, because it, it makes the difference. It really does. Because it falls down in your river, and if you didn't do that really quick, it's just the water. That is very true. I'm going to say sit, 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 sit. Do you have another one, Amelia? I was going to say sit, but I was waiting for the clouds to sit in the water. Like when it, well, that would be more that sounds lit. Condensation? Yeah, but like, as in, but if it got too heavy, don't you use the bathroom? After you drink too much? That is true. That is true. Oh, no, you say that's a work question. Um, what do you have, Samantha? The R in for precipitation stands for rain. I like this. I like this a lot. So we have, we have rain. Snow, sleet, and hail. And the what falls back to earth? And the falls back to earth. And oh, the water. Sorry. I'll just take out the the. When clouds get too full with water, and water or and it falls back to earth. Y'all, I got a. I got. A, Look. 
So when clouds get too full with water and it falls back to earth, you could say, and water falls back to earth. I'll do that instead since you guys are hating on me. And water falls back to earth. Are you happy now? Are you happy? Yeah. Uh, there has been pretty big hail before, so yes. Did you know that the sea is actually a midget S, and if it grows up, it can become sweet? What? Wait, what? Oh, what? It takes oh. time for sweet to form because it has to get cold, and it might take a long time for it to form cold enough so it can... So sweet, sweet is a result of it being... Remember we said as altitude increases, temperature decreases, so it gets colder at the higher you go up? So sleet is a result of it be of precipitation being frozen in the clouds, but on Earth's surface, it's colder. I mean, it's hotter. So when the snow falls, it kind of starts to melt mid process. So it's not quite rain and it's not quite snow. It's a mix of in between. So hail results from when it's windy. I mean, you typically experience hail when it's windier. And rain, uh, the wind blows the rain back up into the atmosphere and it freezes and comes back down. So that that's why like you typically have hail during like tornadoes and stuff like that, or when it's more windy, because it's it's blowing those rain droplets a little higher up and freezes them and then it falls. So, yes. We had hail in my neighborhood and I went out and I nearly got hit by a giant. Yeah, hail. it can be um hail can I've seen hail this size before. I know. So it can be pretty intense. Um so now I saw some, what some of you guys were answering during the how do the five earth spheres interact during the water cycle? The way that I would do this just to make it easier is I'm going to list all of the earth spheres and then kind of say what step of the water cycle is a part of each sphere. So I'm listing all of them and I'm going to put the step of the water cycle that applies. But I know we have this on the next page too, but let's just remember what each one means. What is bio? Sam? Samantha, sorry. Yeah, that's life. Hydro? Cat? Water? Ryan, what is geo? Um, rock, rock or solid earth. Yep. Uh, Brianna, what is atmo? Air, air or gas. And then cryo. Alex, I said cryo cryo. Oh. What is, no, what is it, Amelia? Ice, thank you. So what part of the water cycle, what step of the water cycle that we listed above, and there's a couple we didn't list, but what, which one would go in biosphere, Trey? Which is the only one that involves a living thing? No. Jasmine? Transpiration. Transpiration because it involves trees. This next one's easy. It's all. It is literally the hydrological cycle. What about the geosphere? This one was not listed above, but it is a step of the water cycle. Joseph? Runoff? Runoff? Groundwater, surface water. 
And I say groundwater because the ground absorbs some of that water. Atmosphere, which steps of the atmosphere? Uh, Ava. Condensation, so clouds. Yep, condensation because of the clouds. And then the cryosphere. The cryosphere. Audrey, precipitation. Because of snow, sleet, and hail. So if you wrote this in a paragraph form, that's perfectly fine. But just make sure that you have all of these steps. Yes. Will evaporation go with atmosphere and hydrosphere? Yes. Yeah. So I'll put evaporation here too. Good point. Thumbs up when we're ready. If I notice when I look over these study guides that you don't have what I have and I'm looking at someone who's playing with an eraser, then um, I'm not gonna have any pity when you don't do well on your unit test. Can we turn our bodies, please? Miss Burley. Yes. So I didn't know we were going over it in class and I thought it was late, so I turned it in before class period, but it has okay, all this stuff on it. But everybody should know we were going over it today because I send out the agenda on my website and go over it weekly. And it's in the weekly email. So you all should know what's expected every week because I send it out. And if you don't remember, just double check. I know that I did add your, your email address to the weekly email, so you'll, it'll go straight to you this time, okay? All right. And then our last section. And we won't have a crazy amount of time extra, actually. We'll have just enough time to do the retakes and maybe enough time to do the recovery. Yes, go ahead. Earth spheres, we just went over this, but we're gonna, we know that geo, um, we know that geo is the solid part of Earth. Can we get some examples of what goes in this? A specific sphere, all iron. Okay, so I'll say iron. Give me another one, cat. Rocks. I'm going to write sediment just to kind of jog our memory. And then what does sediment come together to build? Landforms. I'm just writing what we wrote earlier. All right, so hydro is all the water on Earth, and we say all of the liquid water because we have specific spheres that fit the frozen water and the, the gaseous water, right? Those are two separate spheres. So this is all the liquid water on Earth. Give me an example of what goes in this one. Alex. Um, ocean. Oceans. Sam. Oh, rain. Rain. Joseph. Rivers. Rivers. Perfect. The atmosphere. This is all of the gases. And I say on Earth because as soon as it leaves the last layer of the atmosphere, it's no longer on Earth. So, what is the most prevalent gas? The most prevalent meaning like the one that exists the most on Earth? Cat? 
Surprisingly, no. Try again. Nitrogen. nitrogen. 78% of our atmosphere is made of nitrogen. 21% is oxygen. And then the remaining 1% is other gases, like what? Hi, uh, hydrogen. Layla? Carbon dioxide, water vapor. I don't, yeah, I mean, I, I said hydrogen is a uh, gas, but it's not, yeah. Yes? Clouds are filled with water vapor, so I just added that one. The biosphere, this is all of the living things on Earth. Examples would be Fiona, trees. trees, plant the trees, save the bees, clean the seas. What else? Man, getting the same people. Um, Kabar. Uh, animals? Animals! Uh, humans are included. Technically, we're mammals. We are animals. Yes? Sam? Plants, so trees slash plants. And then what's one that can make us sick? What's one that can make us sick? Layla? Bacteria. Perfect. Fungi are included in that as well, even though they're decomposers. But they're not bacteria, they're separate. We'll talk about that in unit six. And then cryosphere. We think about ice, ice baby, right? And what do babies do? They cry. This is all the frozen things of, on Earth. All frozen water. Like what? Ariel. Glaciers. Samantha. Sweet snow. Hail. Ice in general. And then last but certainly not least, you've got weather and climate. Which one of these is long term? Amelia, climate, you can't spell climate without LT. Long term. Weather is short term. Again, I check the weather app daily to make sure that whether I need to wear a raincoat in car loop, right? There is no climate app. If so, that would be the most boring app known to man because it would be the same every day. Joseph. Um, the R weather is getting to look right now. Ooh, okay. Right now. Right now. I like that. This is our day to day state of the atmosphere. And honestly, if we're talking about Florida, it could be minute to minute, <laughs> hour to hour. Give me an example of a statement that might. Or a statement, not, not that might, but a statement that reflects weather instead of climate. Give me an example of a statement that reflects weather instead of climate. Jasmine? It's sunny today. It's sunny today, keyword today, right? Anybody have another one? 
Um, Fiona? 60% chance of rain at 3 o'clock. Cat? Today's weather is 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Today's weather is 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Tomorrow's weather, right? Next week, it's supposed to snow. Remember that a week or a month, those are short term, really. I mean, a month, a season, a whole season is short term, right? A whole season is short term. Think about, let's think about this, right? You have four seasons a year. That means by the time you're 10 years old, you've experienced 40 seasons. Four times 10. Yes, yes, but when we think about like that season is temporary, right? So you let's think about it like this too, okay? Um to, to everything there is a season, right? That's you've heard it that that's like a common have you ever heard that? Like if let's say you haven't like you've had a bad week. Oh, they're like, oh, it's just a season. Don't worry about it, right? It'll it'll pass. Have you ever heard somebody say that? Or, um, okay, well, it is a common, it is something that, that is said. It's actually written in, in um, biblical literature, right? It, it says that to, to everything there is a season. Um, there's also a song. It goes, um, I think it's like, Every season, turn, turn, turn. There is a reason. Have you ever heard that song? No. Okay. But there, are, seasons are short term because they change. So I want you guys to think about that. The L in climate, you could think of lasting, like it lasts for a long time. Long term is the average weather conditions. It's um, the tech room is like right behind that filing camera. For a particular area, over a long period of time. Give me a statement. That would be, uh, for climate, Joseph? The average temperature in the last five years is 85. Oh, I like that because you use the word average. The average temperature the last five years uh, was 85 degrees. I just, I don't know if that's exactly what you said, but. So when we, we think about climate, we think of like years years months seasons those are still short-term they change even though in florida it feels like we only have two seasons hot and then ridiculously hot <laughs> yeah but but it does change right sometimes we know i don't know about you guys but i have a box that i take down about october time it has different clothes in it, like maybe like sweaters or something. And then I know eventually I'm gonna pack everything back in that box because it's gonna change again. So those are temporary. There are things that change. Uh, Samantha. It's, for some reason, like, it's almost always like this, like like the week before Christmas, it's always so much colder and then Christmas you have to wear like shorts and have on I know, it makes it, I get really seasonally depressed this year because I expect it to be cold and it's not. So yeah, it only got cold on like Halloween. I know, I know. It's so sad. Um I know, it's it's insane. Um uh, make sure that you have all this. If not, remember it's on my website. ECSM science six that we got coming.